looking in the file the study entitled The Believers Standing in Christ. Trust alone in Christ alone. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. We're believers now. And we talked about all these doctrines that are interrelated with this. If they contradict one another, then we don't have a Bible that we can trust. But if we understand each one and bring up the apparent contradictions and resolve them, we find out that they're perfectly agreeable with one another and support one and corroborate one another. By virtue of studying this and being able to present an accurate understanding of these doctrines which relate to the believer's standing in Christ, we are then proving out our salvation in a finite manner, accurate towards Scripture. If you're the only one that's presenting this to other people in an accurate fashion, you're still proving your, sal your salvation out to God. Boy, do you get blessed by that. But if you find somebody once in a while and they say, yeah, I'm beginning to look into that. Yeah, I understand that. Being justified by faith alone. Then what do you do about working later? No, it's by faith alone. You're justified through faith. They say through faith in something else. Now, if you have to be justified by works, and you can, it's not before God. Romans chapter 4, 1 and 2. If Abraham were justified by works, he was, he has, but not before God. He was justified by faith before God unto eternal righteousness and eternal life. But now, as he moves forward, which he did in the faithful life, as Christians would do today in their faithful lives, we're justifying ourselves as Christians before men, regardless of whether they believe it or not. At least you, God sees you, your faithfulness, rewards you for that, and double rewards the other person if they accept that it's true and they have a way to become saved and faithful Christians themselves. So here we go. The believer is justified. The believer is justified, declared absolutely righteous in God's sight, having been accounted by God as having the righteousness of Jesus Christ when that individual trusted in God's plan of salvation through faith alone in his son Jesus Christ alone. Understand that and how that fits with all the other related doctrines in the Christian faith and you're actually demonstrating your faith. You're proving it out before God and before men. Those who are mature in the faith understand the idea of the doctrine of justification is that this person will look at you and say, this is a true brother in Christ. They understand it's by faith alone. Do you have to do anything to keep it? No. Does it have to be uh, demonstrated in your experience that, that you're a perfect human being having the righteousness of Christ? No, because you can't in this life. If you do, you're not uh, telling the truth. Because if you say you have not sinned, being righteous, you can't sin. Two are mutually exclusive. You're a liar. 1 John 1 8. If we say we have not sinned, uh, 1 John 1 10, and say if we have no sin, we're liars and make God out to be a liar. So in this Christian life, don't expect to be perfect. Romans 3, 21 to 22. But now a righteousness from God apart from law. No article, no rule, rules of conduct, conduct. See, not just the Mosaic law, but all rules of conduct. Has been made known to which the law and the prophets, the Mosaic law and prophets testify, the Old Testament. This righteousness from God which is an absolutely perfect righteousness, comes through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. Compare 3, 8 to 9 of Philippians. What is more, I, Paul, and all believers, consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things in the temple life. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having a righteousness of my own that came comes from law, with no article means rules of conduct, any law, including the Mosaic law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. He mentioned it twice, emphatic, and being justified is to be considered according to Scripture as being saved unto eternal life. Put the two connect, connect the two. Romans 5, 8 to 9, but God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God died for all the human all humanity. But we who are believed in that propitiation, sacrifice for our sin, has demonstrated his love toward us. Much more than that, having now been justified by his blood. So you've been justified by his blood through what? We shall be saved from the wrath of God through him. So we believed, we're justified by his blood, the sacrifice of his blood on the cross for sins. We shall be saved from the wrath of God 
from eternal death, the lake of fire. What do you get? If you're saved from that, what do you get? Eternal life. So, compare this with 2 Corinthians 5.21. Why are we comparing Scripture to verify that what we're concluding is true wherever we go in the Bible? There should be no contradictions. If there are, burn your Bible. So far I have found none. I found some that are apparent, and it, the trouble was me, not my reading of it properly, not uh, the, the, the book itself. 2 Corinthians 5.21, God made him, Christ, who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we become the righteousness of God. So we have that credit to our account. The final redemption, which we spoke of a while back, the three stages of redemption, the propitiation, faith in that, and then the final redemption, a resurrection body, which is in our experience, actually experiencing the righteousness of Christ in our everyday lives in eternity. Point 10, our standing in Christ as believers. Believers who were formerly without God have been brought near to God in position with the capacity to experience this nearness in their mortal lives. Believers have been brought near to God in position. Difference between position and experience. You have the position of a police officer to act like it and do your duty to keep the peace. Now you're acting upon it and you're experiencing your position. Two different things that are correlated. Without the position of police, you can't act like a policeman. You might be arrested for that. And without the position of being righteous unto Christ, declared righteous by having faith alone in Christ alone, you can't act righteously. Ephesians 2, 4-6, But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgression of sins. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up, even then, when we saved, when we believe. Raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. Are we experiencing that now? No. But so far as God is concerned, we've already, we're already there. He's just going to bring us out through our mortal lives, give us a resurrection body, and we're in heaven for eternity. In a, in a condition that's far beyond this mortal life especially now in the pandemic times. Ephesians 2, 11 to 13, Therefore remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision, the Jews, that done in the body by the hands of men, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, once you believe, you will who were once far away, have been brought near through the blood of Christ. So when an individual trusts alone in Christ alone unto eternal life, God then places him so near to himself that that newborn child of God, if John 1, 12 to 14, that newborn child of God is actually placed into Christ, into his son Jesus Christ, via the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. Every once in a while you check these out. Let's take a look. Ephesians 1, 13 to 14. If you don't know it, look at it. Remind yourself, because you you should be quoting these verses to others, as I've quoted them here. In him, you also, after listening to the message of the truth, the gospel of your salvation. Have you ever heard of the gospel, faith alone in Christ alone, paper for your sins and so on? You've heard it? Okay. Having also believed, did you believe in it? Then what happened? You were sealed in him with the Holy Spirit of promise. Sealed. And why is that? What's that seal? What's the uh, the designation and the meaning of that seal? Who is? Christ. The, whole, the Being in Christ, you believed in Christ. Then you got the Holy Spirit of promise, sealed in the Holy Spirit, who the Holy Spirit is given as a pledge of our eternal inheritance of eternal life with a view to the redemption of God's own possession to the praise of his glory. You look that up, see what it says. Point B. Believers have also been provided with the capacity to experience nearness to God in their mortal lifetimes. Notice the capacity, not the certainty. It's up to you now to cooperate. If you cooperate less, you get rewarded less. You cooperate more, you get far more in a grand eternity in, in the future. But nevertheless, you're still believers. You may be wayward children of God, but you still have eternal life because you can't get unchilded. Hebrews 10, 19 to 24. Therefore, brothers, meaning believers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, 
by a new and living way opened for us through the curtain that is his body. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water, having become born again by our God the Holy Spirit. You take a look at this here. Study on this. John chapter 3, verse 5. You cannot enter the kingdom of God unless you're born of water and the Spirit. Born of the Holy Spirit and the spiritual realm. That's how you're born of God. Trusting in Christ, dying for your sins. God gave his one only life, Son, for your sins. So notice that this passage states that since you have become born again, then draw near to God in your experience, as the next several verses stipulate in such in specific ways. Let us hold unswervingly in the hope of salvation. It's a sure hope in the Greek, Alpida. Uh, we profess for, for he who promised is faithful. Let us not give up meaning together as some who are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another, and all the more as you see the day of the Lord, the rapture approaching. Point 11. The believer stands delivered from darkness. See how all these doctrines, these points of the believer standing in Christ because he believed work together for the same end permanently delivered from the consequence of sin relative to his own eternal destiny the believer stands delivered from darkness, potentially delivered from the ruler, ruling power of darkness in his daily walk potentially, he had the capacity to call on the, the Lord by confessing sins, studying scripture to know the direction of your thought and the direction that you should obey watch for the enabling windows of opportunity to follow through on what you've studied and learned in Scripture as provided by the Holy Spirit who is in you, potentially delivered from the darkness of being blinded to the understanding of truth from God's Word. So don't neglect the study as you move away from it. The temporal ideas and the sin nature will cloud over and fill a vacuum that you have should have filled with an understanding of God's Word. So the believer stands permanently delivered from darkness, the consequences of sin relative to his eternal destiny, as it says in Colossians 1, 13 to 14. For he, God the Father, has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. Darkness equals sin, evil, blindness to understanding the truth. The following phrases from this passage narrow down the applicable meaning of the word darkness here in this context. For he has rescued us from the dominion, the rulership of darkness, and as a result, brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves. Right here in this temporal life, the kingdom of heaven, in the sense of experiencing what we will eternally experience. And in view of this rescue, we who have been rescued have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. So what do you get forgiveness of sins? The redemption, stage one, Christ died and redeemed all of mankind. How do you get the forgiveness? By simply believing in that. And then your final stage of redemption, you then get transformed into a perfect sin sinless body to spend the rest of eternity with God. So darkness in this passage is portrayed as having dominion over one. Being rescued from it results in being brought into the kingdom of heaven, receiving possession of redemption, the forgiveness of sins. You're actually experiencing a forerunning of the kingdom of heaven in this present age in your temporal life because of the indwelling Holy Spirit and the Word of God, whom He enables you to understand and gives you the conviction and the will wherewith to study, and then, despite oppositions and difficulty in this temporal life, move forward, because the more difficulties you move through, you get rewarded for in eternity. Therefore, doctors here in Colossians 1, 13-14, equals sin, evil, and the consequences thereof. Look at... Com Compare Proverbs 4, 9, 19. But the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. And then in Ephesians 5, 8 to 11. For you believers were once darkness, but now you are light in the world. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light consists in all darkness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitful, fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Continued. For he, God the Father, has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we, we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. We're permanently saved unto eternal life. More on this next time.